new solution for you guys. And I wanted to introduce it to you today because it's A, affordable, and it's really going to help you. So um, without any further ado, let's look at Randy. Thank you, Randy, for joining me. I'm so excited to see you again. Tracy, it's, it's great to see you too. It's been so long since we've been together on an interview, but I'm really happy to be back. I know. Well, I see your name almost every day because you're in my book as one of the contributors. So I sit there and just go over it and over and over it. And I'm like, when I'm ready, we'll get back in touch. So yes, yes, yes. So happy. Will you tell my audience a little bit about yourself? Of course. So I'm Randy Fine and I am a narcissistic abuse expert. I am a coach to clients worldwide. I am the podcast host of a podcast called A Fine Time for Healing, which I've been doing for 10 years or more. I've got over 500 shows archived. I'm the author of Narciss um, Close Encounters of the Worst Kind, The Narcissistic Abuse Survivor's Guide to Healing and Recovery, and my memoir, Cliff Edge Road, which tells the story about, it's really probably one of the first books out there that really marks the progress from childhood narcissistic abuse all the way to healing. Mm -hmm. So it's good for people who are, um, they want to know why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. It's right there. Yeah. And, and your book was so helpful because it gives them everything from beginning to end. It's thick, it's juicy, it's really helpful. And today we're going to talk about like recovering from narcissistic abuse because you've got a new thing that we're going to talk about, um, which is, is a course that people can take. But let's talk about letting go of past pain and creating the life that we deserve, you know, people are like, yeah, yeah, I'm in trauma, lady. I don't want to hear about that yet. Um, what do you say to people that are, are heading into and want to recover? Okay. So really what we're talking about is adult children of narcissistic abuse, because there are skill sets that as children of narcissistic parents, we never get to develop. And the reason we don't get to develop them is because they are deliberately stunted by a parent who wants to con keep control over us. So all these ways of the whole avenue towards being uh, an independent self is really kind of stunted. And then you get to a place, maybe like you're 18 years old, you're getting ready to go away to college and Everybody else seems to be soaring and they know where they're going. And then you just go, Poof. and that's really where you feel it. And then you begin to feel it in your relationships and pretty much in everything that you do. So the reason is there's really 10 to 12 actually components that we really need to hone in on, fix them. Um, before we can really feel like we are completely okay. And everybody talks about self-love. Self-love is super important, but self-love is like the last thing. We have to work on all these other things. And, you know, I'm big on the child within. Mm. I really believe that we are all carrying this wounded inner child that really needs some nurturing. And when that child cries out for help, often we really, we ignore it because we don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So starting off with the child within, I think that's, that's really the, the first, um, the first thing is that you must set an attention, intention for what you want, but the child within is really the first place to start. Mm -hmm. The next thing is that we have to identify emotions because a lot of emotions that uh, a lot of emotions have been suppressed. And we don't necessarily know what we're feeling at all times. And so it's important to go back into different stages and see exactly where um, we sort of lost that ability to connect with our emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the next thing that we do um, that's really important after that is to learn to sit with them. This is something that most people have a really hard time doing. So, and if you've never sat with your feelings before, if you've, you know, if you've blocked this or you dissociated as a child, then it's very hard to sit with feelings. And so when you do, it gets, it can be very scary. Yes. 
but we have to learn once we identify what those emotions are that we have that are holding us back, then we have to sit with those emotions and feel them, allow ourselves to feel them. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next thing, I'm just looking at my notes here. Okay. All right. So many of us get into a sort of blaming area and not to say that we blame everything on what happened to us, but we still really feel like had we had a different background, had we had different parents, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And so we get into that blaming and we want to sort of work through that area as well. Um, another, I mean, these are all big things, but the next thing is regret and guilt because how much regret and guilt do we have? Our narcissistic parents taught us to feel guilty about everything. Anytime we wanted to feel good about ourselves or do something that was not in their agenda for us, they made us feel guilty. And so we go into life taking responsibility for things that are, have never been our responsibility. And we also have a hard time acknowledging the parents for who they are, because we have a lot of guilt around whose mother, whose father, there's a lot of, these are emotionally charged words, mother and father. And so with those words come a lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. And so people have a hard time going back and being able to say, I, you know, I don't have to feel guilty. This had nothing to do with me, but narcissistic abuse it doesn't have anything to do with us. It's a victimization situation. Children are brought into this world with really the intention of shutting them down before they really have a chance to, you know, to, to blossom. Um, let's see. Okay. Then we get into forgiving ourselves. This is so hard, but people don't realize or many people don't realize, I shouldn't say everyone, is that what we do is we take the abuse and we continue it with ourselves by the things that we say, the ways that we abuse ourselves. And so many people don't even realize what they're saying to themselves. So, um, but saying, how, how come I didn't know? Why did I have to go through this? Why am I so stupid that I didn't recognize it? Why is it taking me so long to get past this? I'm a smart, intelligent person. I'm accomplished. Why can't I move past this? And so we say things to ourselves that are very hurtful. And these things are actually working against our healing, right? The negative thought patterns that get developed from childhood cripple us. Because it's the recordings that we hear. So if something goes wrong, we immediately take it on in our, in our own head. And that's the damage we're doing to ourselves. Absolutely. And so it's important for us to begin to monitor exactly what we're saying to ourselves and how we are hurting ourselves. And sometimes that feels very comfortable for people. Mm -hmm. That abuse is very comfortable. They're very used to it. But for those who truly are ready to heal and move on, these aspects of self are so important to work through. And they're not that difficult. You know, it may have taken 20, 30, 40 years, maybe 50 years to develop these issues, but it really doesn't have to take that long to get rid of them. And the reason that we harbor all of these or lack of skill sets is that we're just not aware that all these components are affecting what we do. We just think, okay, so I just need to get over it. I need to move past it. Maybe I don't want to see my parents anymore. Uh, maybe I want to divorce my family, whatever. And, but without everything underneath, without the structure, the foundation that's going to help you move forward in life, and really take on life on your terms and with your personal power. Mm -hmm. We have to touch on all these aspects. Yeah. Um, and again, 
a lot of these are, I call them byproducts of having a narcissistic parent. Like we've lost our self-esteem. We lose ourselves because we are never ourselves while they're over us. They are, we are an extension of them. And so when people are like, I lost myself, well, they've got to find themselves. And, you know, going in and doing the inner child work as you described is so powerful because to me, inner child is self-love. It's loving the inner you. And people are like, I never thought of it that way, right? You know, I have uh, one of my clients is a judge. He's in his late fifties, a man. And he came to me because he was having mother issues, you know, because these things don't go away until you really work through them. And at some point we got into the inner child work and it just changed everything for him. And he carries that child with him everywhere he goes, mm. you know? So it's not, you know, somebody like that, you would think, oh, a man, a, a man in his late fifties, who's a judge, why would he even be doing that? But he found it so valuable that he is actually carrying that child with him everywhere he goes. He realized how abusive he had been to that child, how he never nurtured and protected that child. So this is you know, really important. Yeah, absolutely. So I know that that like, you know, facing the pain and forgiving yourself and letting go, like if you could tell people like one tip about letting go, like where do they start? Um, when we cling to the past, we allow that to define us. And to let go means that we have to understand, number one, that this was not our fault because a lot of what we hold on to is blame, self-blame, guilt, those kind of things. So to let go, we have to decide, we have to make a conscious decision that we are going to move forward in our lives. And that is not an easy thing to do. But when you set that intention mm -hmm. that you are going to work through everything and do what it takes to let it go, it doesn't mean that you just say, okay, gonna let that go. And it just goes poof, you know, into the ether. Sing the song, right? <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't go, go, go away, but it's a process of letting go. It's a process of mindfulness really is what it is. It's about paying attention to how you're living your life in relation to where you want to be going. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that the best way to really set your sights on how you wanna let go, how you wanna move on is to imagine the life that you want and measure everything that you do, everything that you think, all the people that you meet, measure everybody against that projected goal. And ask yourself, am I moving towards this goal? Am I moving away from this goal? Am I sabotaging this goal? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just, it's really about, we hear that word mindfulness a lot, but mindfulness is really important. And it it has a lot to do with, you know, they, they talk now about neuroplasticity, about the brain's ability to heal. And really what we're doing is we're, you know, I, I liken it to, if you drive down the same road for 50 years, you've got these ruts, deep ruts in these roads. And so it's very weird to drive out of those ruts. You're just in those ruts. What we need to do is pave over them and build and create new ones, new pathways that where we're thinking a different way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and when I talk to people about letting go, besides saying that it's not about the song, um, I often say, what are you holding on to? Because they're going, I want to let go, I want to let go. And you're just like, it's almost like the holy grail. But when I ask them, what is it that you're holding on to? They haven't even identified it to go, Oh, my old stuff. Oh, oh, you know, so when they really look at it hard and, and think honestly to themselves, oh, why are you holding on to 
that marriage that's been over. Why? Because it's, it's never going to be the same. Well, why do we want to hold it then, right? Again, just sort of looking at it from a different perspective so that you have the full picture. It lets it, that letting go and that mindfulness, it, it takes you to a better place than if you're just got this umbrella going, I've got to let it go. It, it's, it's not it. It's, it's a whole series of things, behaviors and things that were routine, as you said, the holes in the, in the road. It's, we've, gotten used to the hole. We know that when we get to that point of the road, we go to this way and we go around the hole, but the hole's still there. And, and how do we want to go? We want to go straight. We don't want to go around that way. So realizing it's that hole, what is it? How do I fix it? How do I heal it? So that I can just say, gotta go. And yeah, then, right. So tell me about your course, this course that we're describing and all of these things, um, how do people find it and, and how can it help them? Who's it for? So the course is letting um, letting go of past pain and creating the life that you deserve. Um, we all deserve to have the life of our choice, not the one that was dictated to us by personality disordered individuals or anybody else that we've met in our life that really has brought us down. So this is a 12 module course and um, it, it takes you through all the different stages of these basic skill sets that we need to really let go, move on, move, accept, and then find self-love because self-love is really going to be at the end of it. And I just wanted to point something out before I, I go forward with that. But um, for, for some people, letting go is terrifying because when you let go, your foundation drops out from under you and you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. because so many people identify with their pain. It's defined them for so many years and, and they're afraid to let it go. If they let it go, they don't know who they'll be. And so there's, it takes a huge amount of courage and a big leap of faith to say, I want more for, more for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it drops out, but the foundation you build is so much stronger and you can build on that and build higher and better. So my website is randyfine.com. If you go to the website, you go to, uh, go to the menu and it says online courses and the course is right there. It's super affordable. The reason I really price this very low because I really want people to get better. That's just the goal. I'm not here to make a lot of money. I just want people to get better. And I'm actually offering to your listeners a coupon. So if they go, um, if they use the coupon HEAL, H-E-A, AL25, mm -hmm. then they'll get 25% off the course. And it's already low. <laughs> so that really makes it affordable. But I really want people to take it. I want their feedback. This is just, I just launched this, this course recently. So um, I'm excited to have people take it. And I want to hear how they come out on the other end. But I kind of know that it's going to be a really good change. Absolutely. And, and just so people know, like taking her entire course, especially with this count, is it's like less than it would cost you to go to a therapist for an hour and you will get all the different parts that are going to help you. It's brilliant. And she's so talented and so super smart that I know that you're going to learn what you need to learn and just tap into it and never stop learning. Even though you're like, okay, I'm better now. Just keep that flow of information. Just like all of you did when you like learned about narcissists and you watch videos all night start to do that about learning about how to heal. And you can start with Randy's course. We'll put the link below with the coupon code. So okay. anybody that wants to um, at least check her out or go ahead and, and buy it and take the next step to like build back your life better and um, find the life that you deserve because this is what healing is about. You do deserve this and you, you can have it. And I, I love being an inspiration for people that are on the other side. You and I are both on the other side and we're like love and life. And that's what this is all about. You want everybody to have that feeling. I do. And it's the best feeling when someone who has come to you feeling very broken and very hopeless, all of a sudden gains their power. And it's like, wow, there's nothing better than that. 
nothing more satisfying to me. I, I know to you that there's nothing more satisfying. Um, I also want to, my book is Close Encounters of the Worst Kind, mm -hmm. The Narcissistic Abuse Survivor's Guide to Healing and Recovery. This book is a very comprehensive book, Tracy, you know you have it. Very comprehensive book um, that will give you a tremendous education. It's now available in audio and digital and paperback, and you can get all of that on Amazon. Yay. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Randy. I know that we will be back in touch and I'm going to be on your podcast soon. So yep. if you have not checked out her podcast, you can find her everywhere. Um, and what was the name of again? The Fine? A Fine Time for Healing. Everything. My website is my hub, randyfine.com. You go. You can go to every, every podcast is archived. There's a link. You can get to all of them. You can listen to whatever's interesting to you. And it's all there on that hub. You can get to the books, you can get to the podcasts, and you can get to this amazing course. And I can't wait to hear from all of you. I'm so excited. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Tracy. Take care. I look forward to your book. Wasn't that great? I know she's got a lot of answers for you. And the secret is in the secret sauce for her course. And so I don't do this often where I'm pimping something for a friend. But I know this is going to change your life. And it literally is less than a, an hour of coaching with me or her. Do it. Take the time. Do the work. 